guys. Today we're doing another tournament journal vlog. And <clears throat> this is a tournament journal vlog for the TJGT, what is it? TJGT Tradition Spring Invitational, which is at the Traditions Club at Texas A&M in Bryan, Texas, which nobody's ever heard of. Well, Bryan, Texas, not Texas A&M, but you get the point. Um, Two-day tournament. It's a Elite Series TJ, and, um, okay, so I guess we'll, I guess we'll go over it. This was, uh, this last, uh, weekend, and, um, goodness. So I guess we'll go over the basics first, um, 71, 81. And we will explain the 81 after the 71. Or, no, not 71. 72. 72, 81. Um, even par, 9 over. Uh, what place did I get? I did get 5th place. Uh, I got this really uh, goofy looking glass trophy. Uh, I mean, thanks. But, you know, I wasn't really, like, asking for the 5th place. You know, you see, you see the 5th place. Nobody... Nobody really wanted that, you know. Nobody, 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 nobody was really going for the for the fifth place, you know. They were like fifth place. I mean, it's nice that you got the fifth place. I get the term. I don't know. It's 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 kind of weird. Anyway, but um, yeah. So fifth place for the tournament. Um, uh, it's, realistically, I lost by four shots, um, but, and there was only, there was a bunch of people tied for seven over total. Winner shot five over total, second place was seven over, I was at nine over in third, basically, but they had to break up three people for second, so, you know, they broke up three people for second through scorecard playoffs, so that's how I became fit, you know. Um, I managed to get a couple, I think a star or so, maybe, I, I think I still got five stars or something for top five, so, I mean, that'll help me for later, but, um, you know, ten, ten would have been nice, but, you know, we did not get ten, so, uh, right, so, specifics for the round, first day, uh, as if anyone's ever played uh, up north in that Texas A&M area, everybody knows that at some point in the afternoon, there's, and not always, but pretty much every time, there's always going to be a point in the afternoon where the wind is just really, really strong. Like 17, 15, I would, the minimum 10, the most, I mean, as you can imagine, 30. I mean, it's it gets pretty crazy. So... Um, first day, no wind. Second day, wind. Now, I'm not blaming my entire 81 on wind, uh, because it, you know, it did not all come from wind, but some of it did come from wind. So, uh, first day, zero wind. Um, shot 72, started on 10. Uh, out of every hole on that course, I think I only made two, three bad mistakes. And one of the, one, two of the three were kind of from the same idea. So the first bad mistake was uh, I did bogey. No, I bogeyed the first hole, which was a par five, which we should you know never be bogeying par fives. Um, you know they're just they're they're too easy to be bogeying them, and the only way you really bogey par fives is by not playing them correctly, uh, which I tried to do. I, I hit a good tee shot in the fairway, and then I laid up. And I, I chunked my layup, and uh, I had a layup with a 5-iron, which was supposed to get me about 100 to 110 yards from the hole, and it didn't because, you know, I duffed it. So it went about, I don't know, maybe 130 yards, and I had about 150 in instead, 150, or no, 160 in from the rough. So, and on this... Normally the rough here isn't actually that bad, but uh, in this situation it was right and it was right and a duff, so it was in the, kind of like this chunky stuff that was laying down. So I didn't really know how it'd come out. So I tried to get to the green, threw it, and it actually came out a lot cleaner than I thought. 
because I swung really hard to see because uh, I thought that it'd be kind of like chunky and you know, to get out but it it was not so it uh, came out completely clean and sailed right over the green um, and I had the shot good don't get me wrong I just swung way too hard because I believed that I would have to take more power to get it out from the slot which it did not it just sliced through it like bread so over the green I'm in like this potting soil and for some reason we can't drop it from potting soil which is really dumb because uh, it's potting soil right like it's you're supposed to put plants in it they put it there so you can put plants in it but at the same time I asked the dude because I had played the practice run earlier and I was like oh look at all this soil everywhere you know I asked the dude on the first tee the, the rules dude and he was like if they have like these little bushy things I don't know how to describe them but they're like they're like little bushes like this big and about this tall that, and some of the mulch areas, and that's mulch, right? And they said, in that, that you can get a drop from mulch and those bushes. If the mulch has those bushes, you can get a drop from that. But he said, anything else, that's just part of the golf course. So basically, I was in like, it was kind of like half mulch, half potting soil, if I'm going to be completely honest. But basically, I had to like, pick it, like clean off, or mean like not to chunk it. Because I can't hit it like a bunker shot, you know, I got tree, I got a tree over me. So I tried to pick it, I didn't pick it, chunk, left it short of the green. I got up and down. That was my first bogey of the day, which made me really mad. Because, like, all I had to do was not duff the layup, and none of this would ever happen. But, uh, yeah, that's a bogey on a par 5, so that's low, you know, that's bad for my, you know, strike to gain overall. Um, uh, I did have a double on... What hole is that? Shoot. It's 10, 11, 12, 13. 13, I had a double. I started on 10 on this day, mind me. Uh, 13, I had a double. It's a short, it's a really short par 4, but it's also the green. And the fairway and stuff's fine, but the green is a really quirky green. Like, um, it, it's just, it's a skinny green. Like, you're hitting in from here. Well, Shoot, I don't know. I don't even know. I mean, I'm just gonna get the book because I can't. I really can't describe it with my hands. Okay. So, um, as you can see here, we have the uh, green, and uh, this is a false front. Okay, and you know these greens are fast, so it, they actually matter. Uh, this is a false front, right? And you're hitting, hitting from down here, obviously. Um, this is a false front, so you can't be short because it rolls back. And this is a hazard right here, so you cannot be there. Uh, this is also hazard back here. And this is a slope. So if you land it on the... Uh, and these greens are also very bouncy, by the way. So you can... There's no, like, landing and sticking. Uh, the pin is here. Or they put the pin here, and they put the pin here. So if you land it here, it kicks off the bat. If you land it on the hill, it rolls back down and then rolls on the second hill and goes in hazard. If you land only place on the entire green that you can land it where it actually stays on the green is right here. If you get it landing here and it hops right here and stops and maybe rolls back a little bit off the hill, that's 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 your only safe spot right there. Anywhere else you cannot go on the screen. But I mean, it doesn't even really matter because of my double, but I just wanted to talk about that green because it's actually a really hard green. But, um, well, I guess we might as well keep the book out if we're going to explain how I made this freaking double. Okay, so this is the hole. Yeah, you can see. Cool. Um, T-box here. Uh, it snaps to the left here. The green, you know, green's on my hand. And there's a bunker right here which uh, I was not supposed to go into, but I hit it high right and cut it into this bunker, um, which, it, you know, it's supposed to be right here, so I have a wet shot in. But I have, like, a little 120 shot 9-iron, and that lip is high on the bunker, so, and I didn't really consider it until after, until my dad told me that I should have done this and that, you know? But I tried to get for the green. That bunk the, the lip of that bunker is actually pretty high, so I... Uh, I had to try to get it out, and then I hit behind the ball because I didn't choke down any for the sand for some reason. I don't know why. 
By the way, on your fairway bunkers, unless it's some really weird situation, fairway bunkers, you should always be like choking down on every 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 bunker shot. Choking down and maybe a little bit back in the stance. So you have to make sure you club up for that just because it's going to go about 10 to 20 yards shorter than it should. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I hit, but regardless, I hit completely behind it and I hit it about 40 yards in front of me right into that lovely hazard we were talking about, which the ball cannot be recovered from. So I had to take a drop and now I'm hitting one, two, four. I'm hitting four from across the drop zone. I have like an 80 yard shot, hit it on the fringe and two putt from there. So, uh, really just a mess of the whole, um, my dad talked to me about, like, this game plan that I could have done if I was in that bunker situation, which is a lot smarter now that we talk about it, but I could have hit the bunker shot out sideways into the fairway, then hit three on the green and two putt, right? And that's the worst you get, you know, bogey, you don't, there's, there's no doubles ever, you know, in that situation. But, you know, in the heat of the moment, you know, like, you... I mean, the, and the green is right there, too. Like, um, Now, if I would have pulled it off, nobody would have said anything. But the shot itself is hard just because you have to actually you have to hit down on it for the ball to go up. You can't... Because, like, with normal bun fairway bunkers, if they're not too... Uh, they're not, you know, pot bunkers. Uh, if they're not too... Uh, the lips aren't too tall, you can kind of just kind of skim it out and still... But it, it's low, you know, so you got... So when the lip is high, you actually have to hit down on it, which gives you the slight chance that you're going to, you know, hit behind it and not catch all of the ball. So, uh, yeah, it's, it was a hard shot. And remember, like I just showed you that green, I had to land it in like a five, six, six yard wide or front to back six yards in about 12 yards left to right area. But it was more important that the distance, because left and right, you know, you could smudge a little bit. Yeah, it got 12 yards. But six, you had to land in the six-yard landing area for a really touchy bunker shot uh, with a high lip, you know. So uh, just not a very smart play on my part. But, you know, when you're, when you're sitting in the situation and you're only 120 yards away and you got an open green and, you know, you're right there, your brain really doesn't want to take in the fact that you have to go lay up when you're 100 yards away and you don't, you're not, like, you know, plugged by or anything. You have a good lie of the bunker. Your brain really doesn't want to lay up. But, uh, you know, you, these are things you have to take in consideration, like, thinking ahead, like, chess, like, uh, you know, if I just hit it out, there's no way I'm going to hit in the hazard on that shot. But there is a way I can hit the hazard on this shot. So, you know, what's the better, what's going to make a better score with more times? It's probably going to be that one. Just because you might pull off the other one sometimes and make a par. But any other time, you're going to be making double. And that one, you actually, if you hit out, you have two out. Then you have three on the green. And you have a chance to putt for par. You know, you have a chance on the green to putt for par. And if you don't putt for par, it's an easy bogey. You're not scrambling for bogey. You're not making doubles. It's just... And that's really the core of what I've been trying to work on more recently. Uh, just that kind of, you know, planning throughout my, uh, through plotting my way throughout the golf course, you know. So, um, yeah, that was one. And then uh, I had a very good putting day the first day. Uh, I had 27 putts with 12 greens. Um and I made I made stuff from everywhere. I made twenty footers, ten footers. I, I I made every almost like I made like half my birdie putts that I had, um, which is crazy, you know, because that normally you know never happens for anybody. At five birdies in that round, which is you know more than the average, more than the average on tour. So, no, I was not expecting the same putting on the second day, but you know I could hope for it. Not gonna get it, but I could hope for it. Um, so yeah, uh, after 13, uh, you know, started on 10, I started making a lot of putts, and then when I was getting around to the front nine, starting on the front nine, I think I was actually two under going into the final two holes, which is what the, uh, leading score for the, after the first day actually ended up being, and I don't know, I just kind of, I lost concentration, I mean, I just, uh, after six. After uh, 16, I just, I went, or not 16, after 7, I went to 8, and after my first tee shot, which was kind of fine, I just kind of lost my mentality on that hole, I don't know, maybe I, 
I felt like I kind of get lost in the moment, like, wow, you know, I'm two under, you know, uh, this is this is great, you know, because I haven't been under par in a tournament since uh, last year in October, so you know that kind of that kind of feeling for me is it, it kind of it feels like it turns like a switch on in my brain, that kind of it, it kind of tells me like like wow you're doing this and this and then I for some reason I don't like try as hard I don't I, like I put like less into my the thing you know and uh, I'm like I, I'd hit a good tee shot and then another half of the time I'd get that flary right and you know flare right is you know what it's windy you know the wind was blowing about 20 that day it's 15 to 20 and you know when it's blowing 20 miles an hour I mean you're especially into the wind or left of the right left or right wind a flary cuts never gonna do anyone good left or right win you're just gonna hit an even bigger slice which you're probably gonna hit into the right trouble or if it's into the wind it's gonna go absolutely nowhere you're probably gonna hit it like 210 with a driver and it's also gonna cut some more so just the flurry cut is just not uh i mean a low pull would be a better miss on a windy day the it would be a better miss to prefer to have than having the high right but you know I, I have the high right, so um, I had to play my <laughs> I had to play my 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 way through that day with uh, with a 50-50 chance of me hitting a high cut and me uh, hitting a good shot. So I actually made it through the front nine and started on one this day uh, at three over, which was I was actually in the lead after the front nine. And I, I didn't know this. I only knew this after the round. I, I, I really, especially now that we have online scoring, I try to tell, I try to keep myself from looking at the leaderboard on my phone because that's more than capable. And I try to keep myself from looking at the leaderboard because I, it, it just puts me in the wrong mentality. I try too hard, so I kept myself from the leaderboard. But I was, th I was, I was leading after the front nine, and I started off the back nine with a couple. Uh, with one bogey on ten, I bogey ten again. I, I. I uh, I actually hit a good layup this time, but then I hit a bad approach shot from the middle of the fairway, and then I hit it in a bunker, and I didn't get up and down. So I made bogey twice on that hole, so I'm two over total on that hole for the week, which is really dumb, because it's not a hard hole. All you gotta do is just hit the green on the second shot, and you two putt, you, you leave. You know, it's not really a birdie hole, because the green is really dumb. But, um, I bogeyed that hole, but then after that, uh, I parred... All the way until 14, I parred 11, I parred 12, I parred 13, and then 14, I hit that flurry cut right finally, you know, caught up to me, and then I had to, then I got bogey on that hole. In 15, I hit another flurry cut, it was a par 5 though, and I managed to save it, I got a par. I laid up with a, you know, a 3 wood, with a, I lay up, I laid up with a 3 wood, I never thought I'd have to say that, but, um... And then the next hole, par three, hit another flurry cut, missed the green. Next hole, I actually hit a low pull, but uh, I don't think that one. That one didn't help me though, because the, the wind was uh, into and the green. The hole's going this way, and I'm hitting it over here, which isn't gonna help me get any closer to the hole. So I had two twenty, uh, no, two ten into that green, into the winds. So I did a hybrid. I got strong on my hybrid and pulled it left of the green. And I hit in like this little drainage area where I have no stance. I have to like chop it out. And then I chopped it out and it came out pretty clean. But it rolled to 60 feet away. So I had three putted. From <laughs> I th that was my only three putted the entire week. I three putted from 60 feet. And, uh, you know, after that, let's see, that's three, four. You know, I'm, I'm already six over. No, three over, four over, uh, three over, four over, five over. And then, so, through four, through 14, I was tied for the lead. Through 14, I was tied, five over. And I bogeyed 16, doubled 17, and bogeyed 18. So, I pretty much choked it away. Now, I didn't know that I was, of course, I didn't know that I was in the lead. So, I wasn't really, like, trying any harder. I was just, I hit on... Um, from 14 to 18, I hit 14, I hit the flurry cut, 15, I hit the flurry cut, 16, I hit the flurry cut, 17, I hit a low pull, and 18, I hit the flurry cut. And all of those holes are into the win, or left or right win. So off the tee, I think I averaged on those four or five holes, I probably averaged 230 with a driver. 
and uh, you know when you hit it 230 off the tee you're gonna have a long way in so on all those holes especially 17 and 18 I had 200 plus into every green into the wind so I'm in the hybrid of three wood and you know if you hit the green with a three wood I mean that's just big props to you you know but um no I did not 18 I got bogey so um yeah that's kind of how I uh, <laughs> messed up my fun around there and it wasn't even because and I didn't putt as well and I didn't ball strike as well all I had to do was not hit the flurry cut on any uh you could hit it you, i could have even hit it on one just one hole because i i still had a stroke to play with so i could have bogeyed one hole and then still would have won if i just parred out the rest of the holes now parring out 17 and 18 not an easy task just because those holes are ridiculously hard um but uh definitely couldn't have been done if definitely could have been done if there was no flurry cuts involved so uh yeah that's pretty much the tournament Got fifth place, but I have an AJ two weekends from now at Lakeway. This will be my first AJ. Now it's not like it's a younger AJ. It's twelve to fifteen, but you know, uh, you know, an AJ is an AJ, and it's at Lakeway Live Oak, which is of course I know. So um, now I have an eighty-one on my junior golf scoreboard, which is gonna stay up for another year. But I also have a seventy-two, so it's probably gonna even out and still give me a little bit of a plus. So. That's not very good. So I need to play better in this Lakeway tournament because my scoring differential right now is a 0 0.7. But after this tournament, I don't even know. It might go up to a, like a one or something. So I can't. I can't have that happen. I need to need to have it going back down. So at Lakeway, if I could shoot even under par both days, then I can uh, have my scoring differential maybe go back closer down to a zero. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much the video. If you like this video, leave a like, comment. Subscribe down below, you know, because I need them, you know, I mean, look at me, my guy, I, I, I'm looking sorry in the subscribers, and like, the likes, like, nobody watches the tournament journal vlogs, like, come on, it's, 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 it's extra context, like, it'd be good to listen to it, at, like, as you're watching the video, this time, just, I just give context for, you know, the tournament, so, uh, yeah, see you guys later.